call this meeting to order at uh, 6.03, September the 5th. We were going to start with public meeting. What did I say? Oh, boy. I'm really holding on to that month. October October 5th. Please strike uh, September 5th and give it right on to the... Yes, please. Thank you, and thanks for joining us, uh, Doug. Okay. This is a uh, public meeting for rezoning part of Lot 11, concession WFE, Geographic Township of Westmeath, and D delete delete as waterfront vicinity except exemption 46 WVE 40 uh, E 46 and I turn it over to Doug. Okay, this is a public meeting to discuss the rezoning that has been applied. This is a public meeting to discuss the rezoning that has been applied by Mr. John Wright for 601 Rapid Road. Uh, the purpose of the zoning amendment is to rezone 0.4 hectares of residential lot to permit the owner to operate an automotive commercial garage in an existing detached garage on the property. And uh, a building where all the functions of automotive service station may be carried out with major repairs and vehicles may be performed, including body uh, performed including body work and value, but not show, be not include dismantling of motor vehicles for scrap and storage motor vehicles. Um, we had one comment on this uh, from the county that they required a site plan showing parking areas, and uh, Mr. Wright has provided them with that uh, for us today. So I guess we'll open it up uh, and ask uh, if there's anybody here to have wants to speak about it. If Mr. Wright is here, if you want to speak about it. And if you don't, you're fine. Is there anybody that wants to speak against it? And I guess we'll open it up to council then, if they have any concerns. Any concerns from council? I'd just like to hear uh, Doug's personal comments on, on the property. Yeah, yeah my, uh, my personal comments were there, Chris, in front of you. Uh, just that, um, you know, and uh, in the zoning amendment uh, with the conditions and stuff like that, and I've talked to Mr. Mr. Wright about it, that uh, the site plan was one thing in the county, and uh, Mr. Wright uh, is cleaning his uh, business up now, and uh, he doesn't want any derelict -like vehicles there at all. He just wants ones that he's going to be working on and getting out of there. Any other questions? That Councillor McLaughlin. Can, can you just give me? Uh, I'm trying to find where where I'm the property line. Idea where it is? It's yeah. um, Brumley Line, where Brumley Line comes onto Rapid Road. Okay. Then you swing to the right. It's right there on the left hand side. Okay. Okay. So it's not in the village. That's not in the village. No. Uh, that was one of the concerns that I had. I thought maybe it was the one in the village. That's some other time. Correct, the garage is already there. Just wondering if um, you have access to the county mapping. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it might be easier next time if we attached a map where it shows exactly what it's like on the. You can do a screenshot of like the. An aerial photo? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, and we can we can definitely do uh, do that because this is coming to not a council meeting, so that's the bylaw has to be passed at a council meeting. Yeah. So we're going to have the bylaw prepared for the 18th meeting, and we'll have a screenshot there for you to take a look at that. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other? Having no more comments. Moved by Dave Mackay, seconded by Kathy Regier, be it resolved that the public meeting of the Township of Whitewater Region held on October 5th, 2016 be adjourned at 610. All those in favor? 
carried. Uh, yeah. No mics at all. No, ours aren't. The plug's underneath. Okay. We will, we will check them out. So, yes, John, we're, we're okay. This Or Robert, okay. It should be Robert, okay. Yes, you're... It'll yes. be uh, passed uh, at the council meeting? Yes, the next council meeting, it'll come up as a bylaw and it will be passed, Robert, yeah. Necessary, you know. Not necessary. You, know. you will get ten days, but within ten days after, you will get a notice from us saying that it's been passed. Well, thank you. Thank you, Doug. <coughs> well, just uh, okay. We just may not be able to ask vice questions. Or <laughs> Yeah, you can't speak. It's just odd that that's happened. Test. <coughs> Yours is working. We will call the uh, council and committee meeting to order at uh, 6 11 October 5th. Disclosure of any pecuniary interest. Having seen none, Moved by Kathy Wigger, seconded by Daryl McLaughlin, be it resolved that the Council and Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region adopts the agenda for the October 5th, 2016 meeting. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Okay, moving on. Charlene, I'm just going to leave that pile up here. Hi, Ross. You can come ahead up. Ross Jeffrey from MPAC is here to give us an update on farm values. And you're scheduled for what, 10 minutes? Keep it to 10, 15 minutes as short as possible. Yeah, you might have to sit down to actually. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Probably be better. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Reeve, Council, and staff for uh, having me back again, once again, um, to do another update on the 2016 assessment, this time focusing on the farm assessment. We're going to cover some, uh, some key dates coming up, at, and then we're going to get right into the farm assessment and market trends. Uh, so October 11th, uh, next week, uh, the farm uh, property assessment notices go out. Uh, after that, October 18th, the business notices. Uh, if there were any residential um, uh, property assessment notices that didn't go out on May 24th, they will go out on October 24th. Uh, we'll have some time for amendment notices in November, all with a view to delivering the role again in December. Is your mic on? The blue light showing? Yes, okay. yes okay. it is. Okay, I'm getting, I'm hearing feedback too, though. No, it's not. Shall I continue or? Okay. So uh, it's interesting to note that um, 
in Ontario, uh, farmland properties, farm-related properties are less than 5% of the total number of properties. But in white water, uh, the number is actually 19% of your uh, property um, count is related to farm. Um, so very relevant for the, the township of Whitewater region. What are we doing uh, differently this, this time with farms? Uh, we started a two, two years ahead of schedule uh, compared to what we did in 2012. We increased the scope of our sales, farm sales reviews uh, back to eight years and we simplified the geographic areas which, which we're now calling farm neighborhoods and they expand across regular jurisdictions and are more logical for uh, sales reviews, farm sales reviews. Uh, in fact, we've done 5,700 uh, farm sales reviews since 2008 and we've made it a mandatory policy to review every farm sale with uh, 10 acres of land or more. Uh, and of course, uh, we're only looking at the farmland sales where the purchaser is a farmer and the use of the property is as a farm and not for its potential use uh, for development. We are, we are in the, we're, we're beyond the final property value review. We're actually doing post value reviews still, but the, um, the municipal farm assessment staff is very confident in the values and, uh, and the, the values are very solid. Uh, a farm property though could have a number of components. Uh, we see the farmland, the residence, the acre that it sits on, there's, of course, farm outbuildings, and there could be other buildings on the property as well. Um, and just, uh, again, looking at farmland, we're only looking at the sales where the farmer purchases the farmland, it's, and it's being used for a farm, not for, its, uh, not for development uh, or its potential use. We categorize farmland into uh, classes one to six, one being the best uh, with no restrictions whatsoever and six being the worst with severe restrictions to its productive capability. And the farmland qualifies for the inclusion in the farm property tax class um, if it meets the criteria set by OMAFRA. Farm outbuildings, uh, we value at current replacement cost, less depreciation. We're using the impact agricultural cost guide. It gets updated annually. It too qualifies for inclusion in the farm property tax class uh, program if it meets OMAFRA's criteria. Uh, the residence is again at current replacement cost, which is uh, different from normal residences uh, with uh, not related or not on farm properties. Uh, it's um, and the land that it sits on, the acre, if it's occupied by a farmer, then it'll be assessed using farmland rates. Uh, if it's not occupied uh, by a farmer, then we'll use a residential lot rate to assess it. Neither the, the building or the residence or the land that it sits on uh, qualify for the inclusion in the farm tax class program. Other buildings that could be on the property, um, and again, they're at cost, less depreciation as well. An example of a value-added farm activity could be that retail market, um, and the land that it sits on uh, will be assessed using farmland rates. If it's a dual use activity, such as a, um, an equipment repair or automotive repair garage that's sitting on, um, it will be using the commercial rate to uh, assess the land underneath that building. In either case, the building or the land will not qualify for inclusion in the farm tax class program. It's interesting to note the default uh, residential tax rate uh, is, is always the case where um, a farmland or farm outbuildings don't qualify for, uh, currently don't qualify for the OMAFRA program where they typically get taxed at 25% of the tax rate. 
So the residential tax rate is, uh, is the default rate. We've redesigned the property assessment notice just as we did with residential and farmers told us they want to see pro the property acreage uh, up front on page one and they want the property classification clearly identified. And in this example, that's uh, a property that meets the farm property class and here's one where it doesn't. And again, the property class is underlined in this case, it's being uh, assessed as residential property class and, uh, and they're being referred to OMAFRA uh, for application and eligibility. Uh, on the flip side are some details including those uh, acreage uh, again and a simple explanation that the properties eligible for the farm property class tax rate program are typically taxed at 25% of the residential rate. Um, municipalities do have the option to reduce that rate and that discussion happens every year at the upper tier where they're discussing other tax ratios as well. So if you're approached uh, with, uh, with a farm property owner who has some concerns about his assessment, get them again to ask themselves, could I have sold my property for this value and if the answer is yes, then, then they can safely file that property assessment notice away for future use. But if the answer is no, they, they've got a little bit more work ahead of them, they need to contact us uh, and, or, or visit aboutmyproperty.ca, make sure the factual details on their property are, are correct. And uh, if they still have a problem with how we valued the property, then they need to file a request for reconsideration. And those uh, requests for, the deadline for that will be February 8th, uh, 2017, 120 days from now. If they still have a problem with the value after the outcome of the, the request for reconsideration uh, pr process, they can file an appeal with the assess Assessment Review Board uh, again, that independent appeal tribunal that's operated by the province of Ontario and they have 90 days uh, to do that. So we're here to help. Uh, we uh, call us, uh, contact us online at impact.ca or aboutmyproperty.ca. Uh, Come visit us at uh, the Pembroke office. Um, my dealings with farmers uh, through my CA practice, uh, I know they're pretty sharp business people. Um, I think they're probably, they probably know their price per acre down to the dollar. Um, and, and so what, they're probably very much of aware of these trends. Uh, the ones that may not be aware are the non-farmers who are renting out their property and, and they may not be aware of what's happened with farmland values. So let's look at this. We've got lots of third party um, um, uh, confirmation of our trends. Uh, this report is with Farm Credit Canada um, and it, uh, it showed a 65% compound increase from 2013 to 2015 and it didn't in include 2016. So what's driving these farmland values up? Uh, again, we're seeing uh, the trend where in South and Southwestern Ontario, non-agricultural buyers are buying farmland. Uh, farmers are, are selling and moving north to find lower priced land, um, as well as farm, farmers continue to expand their operations to try to gain economies of scale to compete the low interest rates are assisting them in those expansions. Uh, in the county of Renfrew, we've got three farm neighborhoods. Uh, the township of Whitewater Region is that middle one. I've used class three farmland uh, as the example here uh, because 78% of, uh, of farmland in the county of Renfrew is class three four, five, or six. Actually, almost half of it is class six. Um, but for class three land, uh, the, the 
price per acre went from $1,525 an acre in 2012 to $2,450 an acre in 2016. Um, and I've also in Municipal Connect, since uh, the, the values have started to come on, uh, onto the Municipal Connect software in July, I've been tracking it. And, um, and unofficial, unofficially, of course, till next week, uh, we, we're seeing an average increase in farm properties of 58% uh, in the, in the uh, township of Whitewater region. So that would be phased in on an annual basis the first year from the 2016 year to the 2017 tax year, we'll see a 14% increase on average uh, of those properties. Any questions? Councillor Mackay? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, on that farm assessment, you've, we have Bush. Mm -hmm. On your bush, like on my farm, I have 40 acres of bush. Is that assessed as farm property or? Uh, no, like basically you've got your tillable okay. and your bush. So, um, and it, it could qualify for managed forest if if you're part of that program. Okay. Okay. So Ross, is what you're saying is that the bush property would be assessed at residential? Uh, it could be assessed at uh, at vacant. Vacant, but residential is, yeah. Because typically okay. what I've seen is that the whole property is is that farm, even though there is a part of... Um, a part of it is a bush. A part of it is bush. So you and have your house with your one acre, and uh, then you have your farmland, which includes the portion of the bush. I, I, I've always seen the managed forest, so I can check that detail. The managed for you. forest is different because that's yeah. a separate assessment. But if it's just bush lot and not managed forest, because managed forest is also a whole separate way of assessing and, and qualifications, just similar to the farmland. There's certain qualifications to meet the managed forest uh, assessment. I, I can check into that and double, I'll get back to you for sure. Thank you. Reed Miller. Okay. I was wondering if you could uh, just give us a little lesson in these classes and how you correlate them to like for example what is class 6 land versus class 3 and is this indicated on the tax or the assessment notices is that class already on everybody's assessment notice I never uh, noticed no it's not that information is available from the assessor so if you were to phone impact uh, and contact the assessor they'd be able to get the breakdown so how much of it is class 1 and how much of it is class two, three, all the way through six. Uh, so class one is very, uh, with has no restrictions uh, whatsoever in its co um, productive ca capacity. Uh, we don't see a lot of that um, because uh, you're looking at, um, and class two and below all have restrictions of some sort, so you're looking at the productive capacity the range of crops that they can uh, they can grow, uh, the soil texture and components, the soil depth, the climate, the topography, the flooding and erosion uh, capacity. So, so as so, class three is actually a moderately severe uh, restrictions, um, factoring in all those things. Okay, thank you. thank you, and. This is a, totally in regard to the assessment. I guess OMAFRA has no plans to change the farms, farm tax credit that you're aware of. Like you can still own property and have another farmer use his number and he farms the land and you get tax credit. But that's probably more an OMAFRA question. But is that still the case? I, yes, that's still the case. Yeah, yeah, they're not changing that. That's good news. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Mackay? 
I was just going to say on that class one or class two, most people wouldn't know the difference. You could have a land that's perfect, except you have to drain it. Right. And, uh, you know, you very, I don't know very many people have or class one. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, there's only 4% of the county is considered class one. Yeah. So it, if it doesn't drain two inches, 100 feet, it's not class one, it's class two. Stuff like that. Uh, Ross, on um, about my property, is the class value on there? I'm trying to think. Like I know Municipal Connect, which municipalities have have access to. Uh, I'm thinking that the class of the soil is there. I I, I don't believe it is. I'll, uh, I thought it was only something you could get from the assessor. From the assessor. Yeah. Why wouldn't that be public? Like, why wouldn't it be ab on about my property? It is. It all, is? all that land is, uh, there's maps that tell you zones and, and topography and the class of your land. And OMAFRA has that. OMAFRA does, but yeah. not, I'm talking to MPAC. MPAC. I'm just saying where you get it. Yeah. No, I, my understanding is not that you have to get it from the assessor. Okay. Uh, because, uh, uh, again, there could be all classes uh, component on that one property. Right. Yeah. Right. Is there any other questions for Ross? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me back again. And uh, I'll just give you a heads up. We'll send out a little survey to you. It's actually uh, just Four, very short, four questions, uh, just to let us know how we're doing on our outreach efforts uh, this year. So thank you very much again. Thank Maybe you next time you come, you can bring hats or something. We'd like hats. <laughs> just. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the department heads, uh, treasurer department heads update on 2016 budgeted capital projects. So I wanted to update Council on the capital projects um, to date. I do have the uh, department heads here, um, Bill is away sick, so I was speaking to him over the phone and he's given me a verbal update. So if you look on the second page of the memo that I just provided you, I, I broke it down to um, basically specifically for each department. Um, the administration department what we were looking at for the 2016 budget was the purchase of the council desks as well as the asset management software. So those both items have been purchased and uh, we have, we're below our budget. Um, the fire, uh, I was just speaking to uh, Mike in regards to this. They do have a budget of uh, $239,420 in capital items. Uh, so far, they've only spent 37.16% of that. And the reasoning is for, they're looking at some purchases of bunker suits. Um, they also have some BAs for cause and some coveralls, high volume hoses. They do have them ordered, um, and then some of them they're just waiting for a price, but they will be ordered by year end. They were also looking at doing some building materials. Sorry, yeah ordered and delivered by year end in order for them to be on the 2016 finances they have to be here by December 31st not just ordered okay perfect uh, Steve did you want to come and get that mic maybe it might help yeah uh, we're not sure <laughs> We'll let you try it. We'll let you try it. <laughs> okay. You can always sit there. <laughs> 
Okay, say so for the building um, maintenance of the fire department, they're looking at putting $40,000 into the Beachburg Fire Station. Um, they, Mike is working on it. They're waiting for the electrician company to come up to do a site visit. Because I believe, um, Doug, you may know a little bit more about this. I guess there is some um, electric issues. I guess they're looking to build a, a meeting room on the on the fire hall, and where they want to build the meeting room is where all our solar um, panel connections come down the wall to the to the meter. So they're going to have to be relocated, and that's what we're looking for a price on right now. What's that going to cost? Okay, thank you. Uh, but the Forces Falls Fire Station, five thousand dollars. They were to replace the new uh, replace the furnace. Uh, they did have the furnace inspected and uh, they figure that it will be good till next year now. As well as the Westmead Fire Station, they have $10,000 for windows which are done. Uh, and it, now they're just waiting for uh, a price on the, uh, I guess it's called a hanging furnace. Okay, so on to the roads department. Now, Bill does have some tenders that are closing tomorrow for the sweeper broom, the truck box. Um, so that will close on uh, Thursday. So we don't have those numbers in yet. Uh, the roads construction, he is um, happy to say that the rapid road is done. Uh, we don't have the bill in yet, but the actual project is done. The government road has been completed. Grant Settlement Road has been completed. He started working on the corner view, so he reports that he's about 50 to 60% done to date. And hopefully within the next two weeks, he'll be digging out the frost boils and a couple of culverts that will need to be changed. On the Kerr line, he'll have the excavator there shortly to replace the two culverts. Um, and with that, he will require to close the road for about one to maybe two weeks, he stated. And then the sand dome is, uh, is on schedule. Uh, they are working on it. Right now, obviously, we don't have the full toll yet. Okay, so we have the, um, the sewer, the cast in place, that's the, that is to finance the 50% of the outstanding bills from last year. So $40,000 of that will be coming out of reserves. And then, if if you think back, we did um, grant Steve the opportunity to look into a new generator at the lift station, which uh, we have purchased, and that bill won't be financed until the 2017 and 2018 sewer bill. So we're going to take that, ha that amount divided by half so it's not such a hard hit on the users. And then we do have the uh, Beachburg Accessibility Grant Project. Uh, that one is completed. It's just slightly over budget by 1%. Uh, there was just a couple of extras that... <coughs> yes, there were some extras when they tore apart the, the washroom there. Uh, when they tore the one wall, the ceiling wasn't supported anymore, so we had to uh, do some extra framing and drywall there to, to re-support that wall and the ceiling. And, uh, and also uh, vent the mechanical vents out, the exhaust fans out to the outside because they never were before. And then we do have the Cobden drawings that Doug will be working on uh, shortly. Um, I have the Cobden uh, a tender package or, or a proposal package to go to ready to go to the papers, but I'm not real sure yet what, uh, I think we're going to have a meeting with the recreation or, or with Jerry uh, in the near future uh, regarding the arena because they may have changed their ideas where they want the entrance to go now and stuff like that. So I think I'm just going to hold off until I know exactly what's going on. But it's all ready to go to the papers to, uh, to get a, a proposal. Okay, and then um, we do have the Beachburg Little Lakes. That was the pavilion. That came in under budget. Now, I have been speaking to Cameron Dubay from Borka, and what I would like to do, um, based on his recommendation, is 
to get a plaque that we can put on that um, structure to thank all the people that have helped contribute to that project. Uh, would Council be willing to um, allow me to look into that for him? And we'll keep it under budget because we do have a budget of 1500 It's just at 1200 now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the docks. Um, we haven't had any work on the docks yet. Just for next year, maybe we should look at uh, at Little Lakes, uh, some type of a washroom facility or something there. Actually, we have applied for a grant. We're just waiting to hear back from that one, okay. um, which I believe might be the end of December. Okay. But you. yes, definitely that is in the works, and if, it, and if we don't get approved, then we'll certainly put that on the budget, I think, for next year. Okay, does anybody have any questions in regards to the capital to date? And the docks are with respect to the Cobden boat launch? It was just the various docks that needed to be replaced or fixed. Is there any thought of uh, fixing the um, access point, like the boat ramp? Not um, the boat ramp itself, but beyond the boat ramp. Beyond, um, <laughs> yeah. I think Bill has looked into it a little bit on on uh, you know what it, what it would take. I know that it's very when the water's shallow, it's very hard to get uh, bigger. Uh, any type of uh, bigger uh, boat or, yep. or in there. So I think that uh, Bill has looked into it and what it's going to take, uh, you'd, I'd, you'd have to ask Bill. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. to put in our boat, um, you're going underneath the muffler to get it in far enough, like it's, mm -hmm. it's way too shallow. And that starts in August. It's yeah. crazy. Okay. Thank you very much, Marsha. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any other questions with regards to that? Reeve Miller? Okay, hey, Remembrance Day service, wreath resolution, and who intends to lay a wreath at the ceremony. So I have a motion, moved by Councillor Mackay, seconded by Councillor Rigier, be it resolved that the Corporate Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region agrees to purchase a $30 wreath for the Beachburg Lions Club Cenotaph for the Remembrance Day service on November 6, 2016, and blank will be present to lay the wreath at the ceremony. Is there any discussion with regards to who can attend and lay the wreath on behalf of Whitewater Region Council? Mayor Johnson? I would be pleased to do that. Okay. If, if that would be. Is everybody in favor of that? Councillor Mackay? Uh, last year I went to Westmeath. Have they asked for a wreath too? Or? Nothing so far. Okay, so if they do, I'll go and do that one. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Mayor Johnson? Just to comment, uh, Beechburg has requested uh, us to lay a reef uh, on the Sunday prior. That is that. Well, is that the one for the, for Beechburg? Sorry. This is the one for Beachwood November 6th. Okay. On Sunday. Yeah. So that we usually get asked also for Remembrance Day from the Legion in Compton too. So you're going to the Beachburg one? I'll now? go to the Beachburg one. Okay. And I would uh, also be here on uh, to, to, to put a wreath here in Compton on the 11th. And does that normally come to council as a motion for $30? Yes. Okay. Councillor McLaughlin? I wonder if we couldn't do both of them at the same time. Well, I, I guess the problem is is that the uh, the request hasn't oh, come. Well, I understand that. Uh, I just, like you, I'm thinking much like you. It's only $30. and I'm just wondering if it has to come by way of motion at all, that a discussion can be put on as information and a discussion made and... Um, somebody volunteers and then 
I mean, if it doesn't come until the last moment, then at least a, a um, email could go out to say, okay, who can attend? You know, I, I don't think it's necessary to have a motion each year for that. I think it's something that we're all prepared to do, uh, to donate those funds and, and lay the wreath wherever they ask us to do that. So. Okay, next item on the list is Forster's Falls Athletic Association grant assistance from Township. Sorry, Councillor Olmstead. Sorry, just a question back on the wreath. Um, do we have a time and a place? Is it? I assume it's at the Lions Club, and I don't see a time on there. 11 o'clock probably? Uh, I think it's 2 o'clock. Yes, it's at 2 o'clock November 6th, outside at the Lions Cenotaph yeah. at the corner of Beechford Road and Robertson Drive. Okay. Thank you. On page 33. Okay, the next item up is Forster Falls Athletic Association. Um, Councillor McLaughlin, do you have news about this? Well, I had spoke to uh, to Dave Alexander, and I think there was an email Kim went through, and I'm sure it's in your agenda. Is it not, Marsha? This was a, an amended agenda we had added on, so it didn't get into it. Okay. What, what he was looking for, and I'd have to go back and look at the... Uh, I have yeah. it here. Have you? Yes. If you would... Uh, yeah. So what he, is, what he is looking for is he is looking at the possibility of the township requesting grants on the behalf of the various community organizations, including the Forces Falls Athletic Association, for the Canada 150 Celebration 2017. For the Forces Falls, we would like to increase our promotion for Canada Day and increase the activities offered for Canada Day in 2017. I would like to request the following grant request on behalf of the FFAA, which is $1,000 for increased promotion and activities, such as advertising, jumping castles, climbing walls, etc. $1,500 for increased fireworks in addition to our usual fireworks. $6,875 for Canada flag street pole banners. Note that the alternative seasonal banners could be mounted on the same mount at other times of the year. So basically what he's looking for is the township to, to do the grant, um, I'm assuming with his help. So I dug up some, a grant that he could apply for. So right now I did find the celebration Ontario 2017. I spoke to Mike Barber at the county this morning. He's more than willing to help me out. Um, and he also stated that there is another grant out there for Canada 150. Uh, that one closes October 21st. The, he said that that's the federal one and there's a little bit of money left over, so he said you could try for that one. So if we do, I'm looking at the one, especially for the Celebration Ontario 2017, um, this one might be more geared for him, or for this, not for him, but for this event. So I just want a resolution that, because I don't believe we've done one for the rec for the recreations before, have we? Grant, it's normally them that do it. Councillor McLaughlin, I think when they apply when we applied for the uh, Trillium grant to put in the, uh, the library, the, no, okay. no, the playground okay. at, at the. Uh, at the Force of Swallows Ball Diamond, okay. I, I'm pretty sure we were the lead. We were, okay. uh, you could check that. I, I'm also thinking, like, I, I can see this, but there's also a celebration that happens in West Meath, and if we're going to do, if we're going to apply for it, maybe we should contact them and... Uh, do a group? You know, do, do it for a group. Um, my personal thoughts are that it, it's a 150, and there should be flags everywhere. And my, my thoughts are West Meath, Beechford, Horses Falls. I understand uh, a lot of that money is to go into the uh, the celebrations on Canada Day as well. Uh, so I, I'm wondering before we even start that we we check with the other associations and see if they're on board, if they, you know, <coughs> rather than you do this one and then somebody else comes in with another, another request, uh, maybe we should check with, with the, <coughs> especially West Meath, who, who will be putting on a Canada Day celebration, 
maybe check there first. It, it, that's what I, I was thinking when I seen this yeah. as well. And I think it's something we need to do because uh, we, we do those two Canada Day celebrations. That's Whitewater Region Canada Day celebrations. I know we do fireworks here in Cobden as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. just, just to do that is what I'm thinking. I think that's a great idea, Councillor McLaughlin. I think um, on behalf of Whitewater Region, we should be applying um, for all the recreation associations in conjunction with them. And then through the application process, you can say that you're partnering with those uh, rec associations, which are nonprofit, and um, find out from all of them, because normally the Cobden Rec Association um, they raise funds for uh, their fireworks um, and cover the cost of their fireworks. Whitewater Region has never put <coughs> forward any money that I'm aware of towards uh, Canada Day functions. Um, there's also, a, I know there used to be grants where you could uh, apply for Canada Day celebrations, but I think that Canada 150 has kind of taken over that for, for next year. and. Um, I think it's important that all, I think you can just put in um, all rec associations rather than just okay. force, just like rather than naming them because if if they don't want to come on board with us or um, then we're not seen, but I think a letter should go out and that they should have to respond in writing, yay or nay, and by a certain time period, whenever you know, prior to the closing date of the grant application. So then we can't, we don't have somebody coming along and saying, oh, well, we didn't know about it, and uh, why didn't you apply for us? So I think it has to be to the rec association presidents, and they have to respond in writing. Okay. Is it just Celebrate Ontario, or are we going to try for the Canada Day one as well? The the only thing is the Canada Day one is, which one's that? That one closes October 21st, the Canada 150. So I don't think I will have the time to be doing that one. Um, I can try, but to get a hold of everybody uh, might be a little tight. We can try, though. Councilor Mackay? Uh, I think you'd have more chance of getting money from the federal government because they're really promoting that and uh, just go ahead and do it and then tell the guys later. Surprise me. Well, even if you're applying for the Canada Day flags, you know, that we're going to put them up um, by the recreation associations, you know, so that for the, for the villages them, themselves, basically, or um, I don't know, I haven't looked at the grant application. Um, but perhaps you can get uh, one of your staff to help you out do that. Um, so I have a motion here, and we've we've really adjusted it, and it needs some more adjustment, I think. But I'll read the original motion, and then um, perhaps it uh, I don't know it needs to come back at some point because we need to find out. Really, the direction is for staff to contact the recreation associations to apply rather than the motion that's here. But the original motion is moved by Councillor Mackay, seconded by Cam Councillor Rigger. Be it resolved that the Corporate Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends to Council that the Forsters Falls Athletic Association work in conjunction with the staff at the Township Office to complete and submit the grant application Celebrate Ontario 2017 by the due date of November 8, 2016 for their Canada Day celebration 2017. My recommendation is that we amend this motion, if it's okay, and um, put it to say, be it resolved that the Corporate Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends to Council that staff contact 
staff contact the recreations associations to see if they're interested in applying for the uh, Canada Day, one, Canada 150 and the Celebrate Ontario 2017 um, by the due dates and, to, and for them to respond back in writing. Is that okay for the mover and the seconder? Councillor McLaughlin? I, I quite well agree with what you're saying. I think what the problem is is the timeline uh, because it, it has to be submitted by, is it the 21st, Marcia? 21st, which November the 8th isn't much further off. I know it is, you know, uh, two weeks, but there's two weeks yet before the 21st as well, at least, you know. Uh, I know it's tight. Okay. But I, I think it's worth a try. I think staff can... Um, can I apply? Yeah, that, that was my only com comment. Uh, 